Today on the fifth Sunday of Lent, the church offers us some readings that clearly present uh, one of the central gifts of the Lenten season. That is, the church offers us an invitation to cast off the flesh of sin and to put on the spirit of life. In our first reading uh, from the book of the prophet Ezekiel, the Lord speaks to the Israelites who are uh, in captivity in Babylon. Um, he offers them a series of promises and their promises of life. He tells them, I will have you rise from your graves and put in you my spirit so that you may have life. Thus you will know that I am the Lord. Now in the second reading, uh, in his letter to the Romans, St. Paul tells us that the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. Now both of these readings can seem a little bit um, vague or hard to, hard to really grasp. You know, this, this discussion of the flesh and sin and life and the spirit. Um, but I think the gospel really helps kind of concretize and complement these, these two readings. Um, so the gospel for today is the story of the raising of Lazarus. A very well-known story, um, but that could almost make it a little bit harder for us to, to really pray with. A lot of times it seems like these kind of stories that show up so much in the readings in Mass or that are just so uh, memorable, um, the words can kind of float right over us because we've heard them so many times. Um, but there's one aspect of this story that I'd like to focus on that's a little less obvious, um, so we'll direct our attention there. Um, both Martha and Mary, at different points in the story, uh, they encounter Jesus individually, um, and they run up to him, and each of them uh, tells him, Lord, if only you had been there. And by saying this, they reveal two things. One, that they do have faith that Jesus really could have done something about uh, Lazarus dying. But two, they reveal um, an inability of theirs to recognize uh, some goodness that may have come out of Jesus having not been there. Um, so what's interesting to, to look at there is earlier on in the passage, we're told that when Jesus first heard that Lazarus is ill, he remains where he is for two days. So that's really interesting um, to think that Jesus kind of knows this news, um, but makes the intentional decision to stay where he is for two days. And then we find out that during those two days is, is uh, when Lazarus falls asleep. Um, so clearly Jesus allows Lazarus to fall asleep. So why is this? Um, I think it's, uh, well one, I think there are many reasons why this is. Um, but one reason which I think we can, we can really relate to is that Jesus allows Lazarus to fall asleep for the same reason that he allows each of us, day after day, to fall because of the weakness of our flesh that's mentioned in the first two readings. Those moments when we allow our laziness or our uncontrolled emotions or inability to step out of our comfort zone to lead us away from what Christ wants from us, uh, those are actually moments that can be seen as gifts, but only if we're open to seeing them as gifts. There are moments in which we can turn to God, acknowledge our wrongdoing, seek His mercy, and then like Lazarus and Martha and Mary, give Him thanks for giving us the opportunity to experience how helpless we are without Him. In the first reading from the prophet Ezekiel, the Lord tells us, I will have you rise from your graves, and I will put in you a spirit of life. Thus, you will know that I am the Lord. It is only upon falling into the grave that Jesus is able to bring us out of the grave. And through this, we come to know that truly he is the Lord. So for the remainder of this Lenten season, the next time you're frustrated with yourself for having once again allowed the weaknesses of your flesh to dictate how you spend your time or how you interact with others, Turn this frustration into gratitude to the Lord. Thank Him for the opportunity to understand just how helpless we are without Him and just how willing He is 
to offer us his mercy and fullness of redemption.